From Wall Street to Main Street, this is LA Late. It's a big night of evenings, LA Late, with exciting great news about your fourth stimulus check. The latest update about your fourth stimulus check of 2021 is in this recording, that monthly stimulus check that would be the, be the biggest payout you've ever seen in the history of this channel. I have the latest details of what unfolded Tuesday to get four stimulus out the door. Big developing details from the Federal Reserve, from Congress, and also from the President. Also, new developing details about this stimulus from the good side and the bad side. There's going to be SSI reform in fifth stimulus coming from congressional leaders. But one congressman came under fire, at least from me on this channel today, as he proposed to pay $75,000 to one person over the next 17 years. Who is that person? I'll go over all the details. Then, what did Elizabeth Warren say today today, and what did she not say today? Is there mixed messaging coming out of Warren? other congressional leaders, and also the president. Meantime, what was with the president's messaging yesterday about this stimulus? I'll be going over the SSI reform, the $1,400 third stimulus check, excuse me, the $1,400 third stimulus check that's landing tomorrow, the monthly stimulus checks that are coming on a reoccurring basis under the fourth stimulus package, and the confusion about student loan debt forgiveness that has been forgotten by the executive order from the president. What's going on? I have all these details and more as we go into a big night, starting right now, of Evenings at a Light. Evenings LA, and in this, in this recording, I'm going over those monthly stimulus checks on the fourth stimulus package, the third stimulus check, and also the fifth stimulus package, the SSI reform that you've anticipated for. Also, the surprising details about what came from standalone bills today and standalone statements by congressional and White House officials, and the new economic data that came out after hours. If you've not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Also, like this video, and if you've not become a member, consider becoming a member. Also, I'm in the live chat, so say hi. Hi, how are you? The day started with the new home sales numbers coming in very strong. Then we learned a new report came out about SSI. I'll be going over that later in this recording. We had a surprising developing statement from Richard Neal and a new bill. You're going to see me go in deep on that one. And then we had a new report that talked about whether Tesla bet, beat or didn't beat on earnings, UPS's earnings, new guidance from CDC about mass, and also the not Binance with great news about NF NTFs. But first, let's get to the fourth stimulus package. That fourth stimulus package is the single biggest payout you've ever seen in the history of this channel. It's happening. And that fourth stimulus package starts in July with a check in your hand in the month of July. How does it work? What's at issue? How much money is going on? And how would you see this money? I'm going to be going over all those details starting right now. First, let's look at the money at issue. Here's the money that's at issue. The biggest single payout you've ever seen on this channel, $2,000 a month or $1,400 a month from July to at least December. Incredible. Incredible. Now let's cut back and go over the details now that we see the numbers. First, the House members would give you a stimulus check from the pandemic to its end and then add an additional year on top of it. The senators would give you stimulus from now to December. The House members are progressives. The senators are movers and shakers, part of the core of the Democratic Party. And then there's the monthly amount. The House members have actually put in writing the monthly amount. $2,000 the first month and $1,000 there thereafter. The senators, the amount is unknown. They have not specified the, set, the amount, but word on the street is it will be this amount. Yes, $2,000 a month. Over six months, $12,000. $1,400 a month. Over six months, $8,400. Incredible great news. It's the single biggest payout you've ever seen for this channel, and it's for you. It You would qualify for this money. If you're on SSI or SSDI, you would qualify for this money. If you made less than $75,000 a year, you would qualify for this money. $150,000 or less married couple and also household of four or less. 
to which viewers often ask questions. Let me give you those answers. One, when would you see that stimulus check? July. When would the vote be? July. What day in July? Around approximately no later than July 4th, says Leader Schumer and Speaker Pelosi. When would you get the next check? August. Are they coming in waves? No. They can't do the checks in waves. They got to send them out all together because there's a check every month. Would this go by recon? Absolutely. Is there anything that Mitch could block it? No. Mitch is no longer in control. Someone asked that question last night. Is there any who is in control to push this to the finish line? Leader Schumer. And are the senators going to put the stimulus checks in there or the House members? They both could, but ultimately the senators have the final say. This is happening. This is happening. This is the fourth stimulus package. This is July. It's reconciliation. It takes two months. They would start in May and get it to the finish line. Now, there's a series of data that came in today that signals that fourth stimulus is happening. Breaking news just today that says fourth stimulus is happening this way. First, the Federal Reserve said today that it's not changing its support of the economy, that the economy needs fuller rebound, needs more stimulus. Second, there's predictions now for Thursday's jobs number that says it will no, be no better than the week before. That means we're going to still have 16 million Americans still unemployed and 8 million jobs still need to be restored, which takes us to December, which means we need stimulus in July. And finally, there's new indications as well that there still will not be bipartisan support. So away we go to force stimulus, monthly stimulus checks, very easy. Also making big news today is third stimulus, third stimulus, which is now a law. Third stimulus, a lot of other items for third stimulus are getting updated. First, third stimulus checks by direct deposit will land tomorrow. If you have not seen your third stimulus check, go to the IRS tool. It may have updated itself on Saturday because I can exclusively report another wave of stimulus checks went out on Saturday and they're landing on Wednesday, tomorrow. Also, the shuttered venue grant now live on SBA for the first time. Still pending the $5,000 EIDL grant, now live the remainder of $10,000 grant, still pending the restaurant grant. And finally, the money for rent, utilities, mortgage assistance, still pending but coming in the month of May. Incredible news for third stimulus. All right, let's turn now to fifth stimulus. Fifth Stimulus got a news report today that is absolutely bread and butter to get Fifth Stimulus out the door. Fifth Stimulus is going to have SSI, SSDI reform. Before I get to the reform, let me go over the news report today. The news report today said that in the last year, your costs went up nearly 30% for the following items. Car and truck costs went up 31%, laundry equipment went up 24%, gasoline went up 22%, and home heating oil went up 20%. So what happened for your benefits? How much did they go up in the last year? 1%. Not going to cut it. $20. Not going to cut it when the economy costs 20% percent more in the last year and your benefits went up one percent this is what pete defazio a great congressional leader out of the northwest said last october detail on this channel said we can't keep on doing this well that's why we're not <laughs> Those congressional leaders, including Pete DeVazio, introduced an incredible letter just a few days ago that's calling for SSI reform, and that letter is really one of the most shocking letters I've ever seen for a series of reasons. First, it's signed by House and Senate Democrats, pages after pages. Second, the letter has footnote after footnote, if you see it in this graphic, where they said to the president, the recipient of the letter, you promised it on the campaign trail, you didn't deliver it. You did not put it into the third stimulus, and you so far have not mentioned it in fourth stimulus. So we're putting it in a fourth stimulus. Excuse me, fifth stimulus. Fifth stimulus heats up this fall. And what is fifth stimulus? Fifth stimulus is the latest stimulus package from the president. The Democrats who wrote the letter saying they're putting SSI reform in the fifth stimulus. Let me go over broadly what it is first, and then I'll go over the details. It'll include increasing your benefits, increasing your asset limits, and adding an inflationary benchmark, removing the income exclusion, and removing the marriage penalty. All right, now let me go over the specifics. It's very easy breezy to understand this. 
first, they're going to increase your benefits across the board for more benefits. So instead of the current check you're getting now, they're going to get rid of it and give you a new check going forward. Second, you just saw that report that said your benefits only went up 1% this year. They're going to throw away that benchmark that raised your benefits one year and give you a new benchmark, inflation. It'll be tied to gasoline and eggs and milk. And the inflationary rate over the next three years is expected to be 3 to 4%. And that means your benefits will go up every year. Third, they're going to remove the asset cap. It dates back to the 1980s. It says you can't keep more than $3,000 on hand for some of you beneficiaries. Finally, they're going to get rid of the income cap. It dates back to 1962. And it says you can't work and also stay on benefits. They're going to remove it. So if you do want to work, you can. It's voluntary. So you can take home $1,000, $2,000 a month, $12,000, $24,000 a year, and still stay on benefits. And finally, if you know what the marriage penalty is, you know it's a penalty. They're getting rid of that as well. Now, this is incredible great news, to which you're going to ask me when, how is this going to work, and how does this fold out? So fifth stimulus is September. It's the stimulus package after the one we're working on now. When we're talking about the multiple four stimulus checks, those are between May and July. They're going to do the bill. The bill becomes a law in July. Fifth stimulus is in September. They're going to work on it from September, October, and November. And the benefits, when would you see these SSI benefits? November. This is for SSI, SSDI, Social Security, Railroad Benefits, and Veterans Benefits. If you're on multiple benefits, this is you. Now, What's very important for you to know is that this stimulus is going to get a lot of press this week. It got press yesterday. It's going to get press tomorrow. But some of the press is not where the press should be. And some of the details are not what they should say. Going over in the second half of this recording, I'm going to go over a shocker that's going to leave you speechless about what's happening in fifth stimulus. Not one, but two separate individuals who are very important for purposes of fifth stimulus have said two items which are really shocking. And then I'm going to compare them to Elizabeth Warren's statements today and show you why over the three statements, they don't particularly make sense. Ultimately, it does not derail your stimulus checks. It does not derail four stimulus going out the door, but it does show a mindset that needs to be fixed relatively soon. I'll be going over all those details coming up in the commercial break, and then I'll be going over what else happened today that could impact your pocketbook. All these big details and more, and along with the student loan debt forgiveness and the Ron Wyden provision, and what's else happening across the board. All these details coming up in about 60 seconds, but first, here's a little bit about the community page. If you want money right now, not five days from now, and not five weeks from now, then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings LA Late at 9 a.m. LLA returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LLA at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LLA. And the excitement continues on LA Late Night, coming up in two hours from now. That is the humor-only broadcast with Javita Late and Sir Lloyd. 
their take on contemporary pop events and culture today. That Humor Only event is coming up in two hours from now, but you're tuning in right now to Evenings LA. If you've not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Also, like this video, and if you've not become a member, consider becoming a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, Casino VIP. I'm in the live chat. Say hi. Hi, how are you? It's been a big day. And I'm really excited for you. And with that, let's get to all the details right now going into the second half. What a day it is. Today and yesterday, we heard from Representative Neal, Elizabeth Warren, and also the White House's uh, Brian D.C. about taxes. And here's what you need to know, is that while four stimulus is heading to the finish line, there has been a strange mindset by congressional leaders in the White House about taxing, but not telling us what the money's going to be used for, and talking more about taxes than about the actual relief. Here's what you need to know. Fourth stimulus has been a lot of narrative without a lot of clarity, and fifth stimulus has become a lot of narrative without a lot of clarity. But over the last 24 hours, we heard from Warren, Neil, and now DC about taxes, but not telling us what are the benefits. And here is what happened today. Representative Neal, who is head of the Ways and Means Committee in the House, introduced a bill which is categorically, categorically buffoonery. It doesn't make any sense. The bill provides that he wants to give $3,600 to children, newborn to 17, over 17 years. He wants to give $70,000 to a child from date of birth all the way up to age 17. Why? He doesn't say. Yesterday, Brian D.C. said we need to invest in our children's economic future by giving them money as a child. What does economic future mean of the child? And what does economic competitiveness of a child mean? Not particularly clear. Understand, in Neil's provision, which is a new bill he introduced to the House today called the Building an Economy for Families Act, he says he wants to give $3,670,000 to these children over 17 years, but it's just simply a blank check. They can use it to go buy video games. They can go buy, use it to go buy candy. They can go use it to buy anything they want to buy. It's not just for school. It's not just for medicine. It's not just for equipment or uh, sporting goods or clothing or staying healthy. It's literally for anything they want to spend the money on. Why? Not particularly clear. What Representative Neal says in his, le in his new bill is that we need to start giving more money to children. Yesterday, Brian D.C. appeared before a press conference in the White House. And during that press conference, he said that we need to raise capital gains taxes. But when asked for what for, he gave no clarity. He gave no clarity and said the president will give clarity. Well, the problem is the president hasn't given clarity about what even the fourth stimulus package is. And D.C.'s statement was that we need to give money to young children so that they're economically competitive. He didn't say how they're economically not competitive at age two currently or what a child, why a child would ever be economically competitive. He then went on to say the following about capital gains. He first said that capital gains is needed because the people who have capital gains are lazy, that they haven't worked a day in their life, and that their money was not earned. Really? Then he said that the vast majority of all wealth in this country was created by people who worked as salary employees. So taking that context, he disparaged the entire universe of entrepreneurs, sole practitioners, gig workers, and sole practitioners, saying that the only people who have money in this country are people who've worked as a W-2 employee. DC himself has never worked a day in his life. He's been a career politician. Really not clear. And what's also not clear is that from the White House in the last week, they've talked about corporate taxes, inheritance taxes, capital gains taxes, and individual taxes, all being changed, but without giving clarity to you what that money is going to be used for. Here's what you need to remember. In 2020, we detailed under the HEROES Act the push to give hazard pay a $10,000, the push to pay FPC retro, the push to pay stimulus checks, the push to help people get the CDC grant and the other grants and the big business grants and then the sole practitioner grants. This year, in the last week, we've seen more about spending money but not explaining what the money's going to be spent on. 
We've seen very little legislative policy. We need to help this group or that group, and this is the way we're going to help them. But we've heard more about disparagement. Not particularly good. Now, here's the contrast. Elizabeth Warren appeared on broadcast news this morning, and it looked like apples versus oranges. What did Elizabeth Warren say? Elizabeth Warren said on broadcast news that corporate taxes, when you look at the top Fortune 100 companies, and they, she mentioned all these publicly traded companies whose names I'm not going to mention, but she certainly mentioned, she said they're not paying corporate taxes. What's beautiful about Elizabeth Warren's message is it's totally different than what's coming out of the White House. The White House's attack is on everyone that is an LLC or corporation, a sole practitioner that just happens to have corporate structure that may have lost their business during the pandemic or narrowly survived. Hundreds of millions of businesses were lost during the pandemic. And the president's attack has been on all businesses of all methods. Elizabeth Warren, different. Today, she took aim at the big corporate offenders, the Fortune 100 companies. In recent days, she's talked about trillionaires and billionaires, again showing a contrast. The president, on the other hand, said he would not do that. Here's what's interesting, is that ultimately Richard Neal's bill will not get to a finish line. It will never get called for a vote. It will never happen. But it's very problematic that a person who is responsible for doing the reconciliation of the fourth stimulus package has a mindset so detached. Remember, Richard Neal never gave you a stimulus check, never gave you FPUC retro, never gave you hazard pay, never gave you a lot of stuff, and yet now he wants to pay $70,000 to new children? Uh, really interesting. And it's also interesting in the context of the debut of the fifth stimulus package. Remember, when we talk about that SSI reform that comes from those Democratic leaders, they wrote in that letter to the president, you promised during your campaign trail to do SSI reform. You haven't done it. You didn't do it in the third stimulus. You don't have it in a fourth stimulus. We're putting it on the fifth stimulus if you don't put it. So remember, when you look at that graphic from earlier today on this channel, from earlier on the show on this channel, that graphic about SSI reform, this letter, this letter from these congressional leaders, they're putting it in there, not the president, which shows ultimately that certain Democratic leaders are ensuring you get help but we're not seeing it from others across the board. Also making news today was that the housing market showed the strong, a very strong number this morning. That housing market showed its best number in over a year. February sales rose 12%, meaning more capital gains, but the president doesn't want those capital gains. You saw that SSI report that came out today that showed that, SS, that your benefits only increased 1%, but the cost of living increased nearly 20% across the board today. Then, Tesla, while beat, beat on earnings and revenue, a lot of it was propelled by Bitcoin sale. And that caused uh, Jim Cramer to say it's not in a good position. He's looking forward to seeing what's happening with Ford and its earnings later this week. UPS delivered great numbers. And then the CDC is announcing new guidance on outdoor mask wearing for unvaccinated people. Finally, Binance, which is the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, is, loft, is launching an NTF marketplace. The student loan debt forgiveness has been among the subjects that are sort of at par for where we are right now. Student loan debt forgiveness has been evaded by this president since ele election night. Whether it is Warren or Schumer, who have met with the president over half a dozen times, he's run from the story. Pre press have asked him for his position. Finally, he dispatched Miguel Cardona, his education secretary, over two weeks ago to prepare a deal memo to say with, with, whether he can forgive executive, forgive by executive order student loan debt. He can. Obama did it. Trump did it. And where's that memo? Hasn't been produced. Again, running from the story. Also running for the story is the lack of unemployment assistance coming this September. No person in the Democratic Party has yet to come forward with a plan if we're going to extend UI, PUA, FPUC, or any of these programs come September. Here's what you need to know, and you're here for the first time tonight on Evenings LA. July is just around the corner. If we have 17 million Americans unemployed by June which is just a few weeks away from now, what are we going to do? Are we going to let PUA, FPUC, and, and, uh, and are we going to let PEUC, FPUC, and PUA expire in September? We can't. 
16 million Americans unemployed, that's not acceptable. We have to extend the program. And when do we have to extend the program? In the fourth stimulus package, because they go on vacation from July to September. No one's thinking about this. They're thinking about children. They're thinking about two-year-olds and four-year-olds. What about all those unemployed people that will not have benefits come July? Does it sound familiar? It is familiar. This is what happened a year ago. I hope this doesn't happen again. Ultimately, uh, Ron Wyden is one of the few saving graces. He's introduced standalone legislation to help those PUA people stay on some form of benefits with 250 a week for up to six months per year. But what about FPUC? What about PUC? Where is that mindset? As we approach the coming weeks, we know where this economy is going, but we don't know if we're rebounding at a faster rate, rebounding at the same rate, or going to retract. And ultimately, if we retract, if the economic rebounding is not as strong, we may need more relief. And ultimately, is the president signaling that relief? Or is he signaling just a lot of money for a lot of children? Very confusing. Coming up on LA Late Night tonight, you'll see more about what's unfolding. But here's what you need to know. The Shuttered Venue Grant, now live on SBA. The EIDL Grant, the remainder $10,000, now live. The PPP Grant, now live. The $5,000 Grant, not live. About to go live, the, fi the money for rent, utilities, mortgage assistance under third stimulus coming in May. A lot of developments and a lot of details. And ultimately, one of the things you need to know is that the president's time is now to pass legislation. In 2020, we focused on how there was a push from two sides to get legislation to help you. Now with the party in control, it's his opportunity to pass the legislation to help people in control to help people that need that help, whether it's unemployed people or seniors or people uh, who haven't been able to, to weather the pandemic financially. This is not the time or place to talk about things that are not at hand. And hopefully we're gonna see over the next few weeks that the White House understands that if the economy turns in a direction that we did not anticipate, that we are prepared for that across the board. As we go into a big night of Evenings LA, I'm glad that you stayed with, with me throughout the day. Ultimately, when we talk about raising taxes, the taxes need to be used in a way that Americans will improve as they reopen their economies. Reopening their economies means now. Economic competitiveness of the future is not now. It's 20 years from now. It's 30 years from now. And ultimately, you know what happened in 2020. In 2020, Nancy Pelosi thought it was a good idea to slide into the second stimulus, a lot of relief for things that weren't then. We're at the time of the moment, people. We're at the time of the moment now where businesses start to reopen, people are getting back to work. They need relief now. We don't need to be talking about legislation for 30 to 40 years from now, for two-year-olds to when they become adults 18 years from now. We need relief for things right now. You have struggled through this economy, you have struggled to pay your bills, and whether you're on SSI or SDI, Social Security or Royal Benefits, whether you're an employee or not, it's time for you to get that relief. And the time is of the essence. With the ability to pass recon after recon, the president needs to use his efforts. And ultimately, you need to lean on those congressional leaders who have had your spirits at heart. Remember, that letter that came to the president for SSI reform said, you're not doing what you promised. You need to start doing what you promised. You need to start delivering what you wrote in the transition papers. When we saw that video last night on LA Late Night from Brian DC, yeah, a lot of us were shocked by it. There was a whole mindset of it, a whole tone of it, and a whole delivery by DC that suggests really a disparagement of the working American. And now we see from Representative Neal that the focus of the American people should not be providing hazard pay, should not be providing FPUC retro or the extension of FPUC or the extension of PUC. It should be helping two-year-olds 20 years from now. Smart? Drop your comments below. I'd love to see your comments in, uh, across the board. And with that, thank you for joining me on a big night of Evenings LA. I'm back with you in two hours from now as we go into the exciting developing details of LA Late Night. It's a humor-only broadcast. And as a humor-only broadcast, it's important to laugh. 
It's important to have fun, and it's important to come together as a family. And that's what LA Late Night is every night. And with that, if you've not subscribed, please subscribe. I want you to be part of this family as it goes into day three of its second year. Hit that subscribe button. Like this video, two, 3,000 likes. I want you to stay with me. If you missed Afternoons LA before this broadcast, it's now on this channel archived as well. Stay informed, stay focused, and stay with LA for more.